Yes, good evening. Where, where in the world are you today? Uh, yeah, it's uh, six o'clock at night. I'm in Manchester just now. Okay, Manchester. Okay, great. Well, appreciate you being here. And uh, on behalf of uh, LUFC and all of our families, players, um, it's awesome to have someone uh, of your of your ability to top level uh, talent uh, with us to sort of go through your career, go through how it all started. Um, so before we get going, uh, just a little introduction to you. Obviously, you're at Manchester City, right? Won a League Cup, won an FA Cup. Currently signed with Orlando, okay? Yeah. Just, just finished your loan spell at Melbourne, okay, where you were, won a title on a championship. And obviously a uh, full-fledged Scottish international. Um, played in the World Cup, scored a goal in the World Cup. We'll have a, have a chat about that one in a bit. Um, yeah. So great. So appreciate you, appreciate you being here. So uh, how did it start? What, 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 what got you into the game? What got you started um, playing, playing the sport back in Scotland? What was the uh, Yeah, growing up in Scotland, obviously football is like everybody plays football. It's like what you play as a kid, mostly just boys, to be honest. When I was growing up, it was mostly just boys. But I've got an older brother, Rory. Who you know is not very good at football, <laughs> uh, but he uh, he used to play uh, all the time with his friends, and obviously as, as the little sister, I just wanted to join in and play like from a really young age. And yeah. um, so as soon as I could walk, me and him were always kicking a ball in the back garden. So that's kind of where I fell in love with it, just playing playing with like my brother and friends and stuff. And then when I was about it wasn't until, well, when I was eight, I signed for, well, I didn't sign, but I played for, like, the local boys team. Yeah. Uh, there was no girls teams uh, when I was growing up. Um, but then I wouldn't be allowed to play the game, so I could train with the boys. But other the opposition teams said, no, like, we don't want a girl to be on the field. Really? Like, we don't want to play against her. Like, and it wasn't, not because, I don't know, because I was good enough. Like, the coach wanted to play me, but obviously, I guess it was just unusual to, to play against the girl and other boys didn't want to play play yeah. against the girl. I'm not sure. How, how's, um, that, how's that evolved over over time in terms of the women's oh, game, in terms of the, the youth level game with, with girls in, in, in Scotland? And obviously, we'll get into that over here. Now you're obviously in, in Orlando uh, playing, but we'll get to that in a minute. But how did, how did, how did that evolve as you were growing up playing the sport? Oh, it's changed so much. It's so good to see nowadays uh, when I get to go home uh, up to Scotland and I'll go to the local parks where I used to play and it's just fully like lots of girls playing football now, which is amazing because when, when I was younger, it, it was just fully boys. So, yeah, the game's really, really developed um, for women in Scotland and they're actually just this year, a couple of the teams went professional. So Rangers are like paid, now pay their women in Celtic and I think Parts are about to as well. Heads of a couple, so yeah, the game's uh, definitely grown. It's not quite professional yet, but there's a lot more respect for women's football now in, in Scotland. That's great. So how how did uh, how did you start that from that youth level and building into sort of taking this a little bit more seriously? Obviously, we finding out you had the talent, finding out that this is something you wanted to pursue. What was the what was the bridge between that that youth level and that uh, those younger ages into sort of the early college years or even your high school years? I think when I was play, I think I was 13. And this is when it changed for me that I thought actually I should, can actually take this seriously, mm. was when I was in like, a, I managed to make a, a, a girls team in Edinburgh. And so I had to travel about 40 minutes to get there, which was like long distance in those times. <laughs> um, and there was like a development coach for the like Scottish FA and they were holding trials for like a regional squad and mm -hmm. um, so that was just for like the Edinburgh and Lothian region and my dad, mum and dad were like I remember my dad thinking like why are we taking you along to this trial like <laughs> the Scotland's women even have a team and they took me along and I played and it was the first time I'd seen so many girls playing football in one place I was like oh my god Excellent. and then so we played and I actually got picked to, for the regional squads and then got picked to the go to a national squad at like the under 15s. Right. Um, I remember we got the full Scotland yeah. kit and like it was a new kit and I remember bugging my mum and dad because I really wanted to wear the kit um, but it was too expensive in the stores. So I remember going to the Scotland camp and we played actually against Holland under 15s and we got beat like 7 nil. it was terrible but I remember playing for, for the country and thinking well like if I stick in like I get more kit and I get to like get wear fancier boots and play in nicer stadiums so I think when I was 
I hit that and I had my first experience at youth national team I thought okay I'm going to like step in and, and see where it can go so from that with that uh, I was with Hibs ladies well Hibs girls uh, from about 12 years old till I was 18 so I played through all the youth teams and then when I was 16 I got asked to play for the women's team and then that's kind of when I, I played uh, you know like women's football yeah. So you mentioned uh, you mentioned your parents there. You mentioned your parents driving you. You're driving you through Edinburgh forty minutes. What kind of immigrants yeah. did your parents have? Did you obviously your brother played? He's got a yeah. couple of caps for the uh, Scotland schoolboys, right? So yeah. what kind of influence did and you obviously got a younger sister as well. Yeah, uh, he must have mentioned that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he would like that. He would like that a lot. Now he never scored as many goals as you. That's for sure. But uh, yeah. we won't touch on that one too much. Um, but what kind of influence did, you, did your family have, have on that in those early stages and, and as you sort of grew into sort of adult life? Yeah, obviously, my mum and dad were huge, huge support and huge influence and in, like making what, what I've managed to do possible. Uh, I think what young kids don't realise, uh, you know, like their parents feed them, they make sure they've got their kit, they wash their clothes, they t drive them to practice, like yeah. sometimes hours, they drive them to games, yeah. fly yeah. to games, like it's such a huge commitment and I don't think you appreciate that until you're older and you look back and think, wow, if you didn't take me to train and I would never be able to play in the game, so I never would have succeeded and that sort of thing. And I think with my mum and dad, as you said, I've got an older brother who was actually playing in Cowden Beef, which was like, yeah two, three hours away. So he had to get the train through there. I've got a little sister who's a dancer now and she had to go to like dance uh, lessons and stuff. So yeah, they, my mum and dad just spent all every day running us around to training or dancing or whatever. So I, I thank them now for it, eh? Like now I'm yeah. older and I just yeah. thank, thank you so much for doing that for us. So yeah, yeah well, they, they were a They followed you everywhere, right? I mean, they, they followed yeah. you to Orlando to watch you play. They were at the World Cup. Uh, some great pictures yeah. and, and hopefully we'll share some of those pictures of some family photos of uh of you guys in in, in france yeah. uh which is amazing yeah, so, it's special when yeah. they can go to a world cup and see me like trophies and stuff it's nice to yeah. share that experience with them absolutely great so let's talk uh let's talk a little bit about uh your college career and 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 what happened there or how you got into college how did you lead yourself into america so we've covered that sort of youth level uh, developing your game and, and your love for the game and then obviously the next step was getting into university getting into college and, and kind of which bridged you into your professional career so how did we get into college what what college do you play at why did you choose that college what was the what was the whole process of that for you so for me like I was finishing my last year of high school and I was on I'd already been playing like the highest level of football I could in Scotland for like the last two years yeah. And I was thinking, what, what happens next? Because at the time, the English league still wasn't like, I think they'd gone bankrupt or something. Yeah. So there wasn't a professional league to, to yeah. go to in England. Yeah. And the only one was at, like the NWSL in America. Mm -hmm. So for me, growing up as a kid, I always thought to play women's professional soccer, it was that we had to go to the States. You know, like they'd yeah. won all the World Cups and all that. Like that was the place to go if you're a women's soccer player. So then when I was, had... I was leaving high school and I was looking at colleges and I was really lucky that one of the girls that played in my club team, our captain Rhonda Jewell, and she actually went to Florida Atlantic University when she was younger. So she connected me with the school. And for me, like, I had no idea how big soccer was. I didn't realize how many colleges there were. I, I didn't understand like division one, two and three. Yeah. I just wanted to go play football and like study. So to go to FAU, it was somewhere that obviously there's a beach. I like hot weather, <laughs> right on the beach and I could play football and, and luckily they offered me a full scholarship. So obviously yeah. I was delighted. Um, to accept that and yeah I, did, I kind of really went not really knowing what to expect and it was incredible like it was an amazing four years and um, I was really lucky that uh, coach Baker he's still the current coach he came in uh, after my first semester and totally changed the program and um, because yeah when I went I think they were I don't know what we were ranked like in the thousands probably and now I think they're in like the top 10 so he really turned the program around and like I learned a lot off of him and I made some incredible friends there and yeah I loved a lot of Florida. 
How, 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 was that, how was playing college? How did that, uh, how did balancing, obviously, the academic side, trying to stay eligible, uh, well, so working towards a degree, how did you, how do you manage that or how do you balance that with, with your full-time training? I think it, you have to be so organised. Like, I remember every night before bed, I'd get, a, like, my notebook out and I'd literally write from every hour of the day when I woke up what I'd be doing. So I'd be like, yeah. all right, so, like, six o'clock, get up, have yeah. breakfast go to practice, after practice, like nine o'clock class, yeah. don't know, like have lunch, study for two hours at the library, go to other classes, practice, like I had every hour of the day, like slotted, like it was a lot of organization. Yeah. Um, and I like, I'm such a geek, like I love school and I wanted to get straight A's. <laughs> so I like studied all the time and like I managed to graduate like with a 4.0 and stuff. Yeah. So I was buzzing for that. Yeah. Cause I do think as much as, soccer is important and uh, like that's a huge priority I think as a female at least when I was at college you had to, you had to have something to fall back on because there's not enough money in the women's game yet to like just like retire at like 30 and then live off your earnings like you're going to have to go and work probably after that so you need like a degree behind you so that was my like thought process behind it is you know after soccer I'm going to need something to to fall back on yeah no it's huge that's huge um so you played four years of college okay you do pretty well okay you definitely score more goals than your brother yeah. and then what's uh what's the next step for you or what, what what took you to to bristol and into into the professional game um again it was so lucky like i was i was ready to stay in florida and do like a master's in biology and not play soccer like i thought there's because i think the english league was just yeah. Like it was getting good, it was off um, yeah. Yeah. but I thought, uh, who I've not got any experience. I'm coming from college, like, I wasn't playing for the national team. And um, because a huge part of me going to America was that the Scotland coach at the time had played through all the youth, youth teams 15s, 17s, 19s, and actually had one cap for the A squad when I was 18. But then when I was going to America, and the, the coach said, you know, if you go to America, like you can't play for Scotland anymore, like, you won't play for Scotland again. So I was like, oh, no, like, <laughs> what do I do? But yeah. I didn't want to stay in Scotland, and yeah. I thought I'd develop more, like, going to a new culture, learning that stuff, playing at college. Um, so that was a big risk. So for me, at the end of college, not playing for a national team, mm -hmm. I thought, I'm not going to get signed anywhere. Uh, but I was really lucky because my coach that I had at my last club in Scotland, Hibs, he was the Bristol City manager by the time I'd graduated. So he kind of, I kept in contact with him, like he's a, he's a good family friend. Um, and he said, look, you can come play at Bristol. We've got like half of the season left. We're fighting for promotion. We need to win every game. Yeah. Uh, I think there was 10 games left, no, 12 games left. Right. If we win them all, we'll get promoted and we'll be in like the top league in England and I thought oh brilliant he was like I can't pay you and I've not got a house for you but you can sleep on one of the um, club houses couches and I'll see if I can get you a job so I was like oh god like I either stay on and do a master's or I take this absolute risk but I thought nah like I need to I need to risk it I love football if it doesn't work out I can can always study again so actually the day I flew from uh, Florida, I flew Miami to Edinburgh and when I landed in Edinburgh I had an email from the coach saying look one of, we've just lost a girl, she went to uh, Bristol, one of the players went uh, back home to Portugal uh, we've got a room for you in one of the houses, one of the club houses and I can pay you £40 a week <laughs> so I was like buzzing, I was like, oh, like amazing uh, so I had I had a room and I had a club to play for and I was really lucky I went to Bristol and the, my three roommates have become like my best friends now I had really good girls with me I got a job uh, actually at a bar a football bar like where we trained so I worked at the bar after training to like get money yeah. um, and luckily we we won all our games we got promoted and then I was uh, playing in the top flight alongside obviously all yeah, the huge so clubs so you, you go from Bristol, you get them promoted. I think you, you were in the, one of your goals, you were nominated in the goal of the season or in the top five. Or... Oh, yeah, I got goal of the, goal goal, of the season. Yeah, goal of the, the game, season. The game we got promoted against yeah. Everton. So that was massive. 
So that was that was. I, cool. I remember that goal of the season, and then uh, from 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 Bristol though, you, you don't stay with them, do you? Into into the top flight, mm-hmm. you you get a bit of interest. And, yeah, um, but I had a bit of a situation that I never thought I'd be in because we I've obviously played six months at Bristol, yeah. and then the league, the women's league changed seasons, mm-hmm. so we used to play through the summer, and then it was changing so that it would start in like the same as the men's league. Yeah. So they made a mini season. So the se- our season that we got promoted finished in like November, and they made a mini season between January and May. Yep. So that didn't count for anything. It was just called the spring series. So during in between that, obviously Bristol were like, oh, sign on, sign on. And then I had a, a, a couple other clubs that were like, oh, no, sign for us. And I was like, oh, I don't know what to do. Obviously, I could get more money going somewhere else, but I love Bristol, I love the girls. Like, I've not been there that long. That so I decided, best, yeah. I decided, no, I'm going to stay for this little spring series. Like, I'm not ready to leave. Right. And I think it's something, like, I feel that's when the first felt like pressure from football I feel like a lot of players get pressured into making decisions that maybe everyone else thinks is the right decision but if you don't feel comfortable with it it's maybe not so I actually agreed to leave Bristol made the call and then I changed my mind and I had to phone back and say actually no like I'm sorry I can't leave Uh, but I'm really glad I stayed because after that uh, the clubs that were interested at that time like I didn't I wasn't excited about it like but luckily, six months later, after that spring series, I got a call from Man City, and then yeah, I was so absolutely buzzing and jumped at that chance. Man, Man City, one, one of the biggest clubs, and the world's most well-known clubs in, in the world right now, right? Um, yeah. Fantastic facilities, fantastic program, fantastic stadium, both men and women. So what's, how did that go? How was that initial conversation? How was that decision-making process? I mean, because you must have rubbed shoulders with, with everyone, everyone in England, the best players in, 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 in the country at that point. Yeah, it was, uh, I remember when I was actually at Bristol and we played against Man City, just being in, like, we actually, I don't know why, there was a minute silence before the game, so we were, like, lined up on the centre circle, like, facing them, and I just remember looking at, like, Steph Houghton, Jill Scott, and actually at the time, Carly Lloyd was playing for Man City. Yep. And I remember looking and seeing Carly Lloyd and thinking, my days, like, I can't believe I'm on the same pitch as them. Yeah. And then... Obviously, like a few months later, I was actually in their team. So, yeah, it was like the first couple of days, obviously, you're just annoying, like, can't believe you're there. But then the girls are so nice, like, and they, as soon as you start playing, like, it's all, you all just talk the same language. So, no, it was really a really good experience. And the first year we had made it, we didn't win any trophies my first year, but we made it to the semi final of the Champions League. So, for me, playing in the Champions League was incredible. Um, and we just lost out 1-0 to Leon, who went on to win it. And so, yeah, no, that was a great experience. Really enjoyed that. And then, obviously, the second year, we won the FA Cup at Wembley, the Conti Cup. So, yeah, it was. I loved it. It was really, really good. So, after after that final year with City, then you, you make a big decision, right? You, you decide that you're coming back to the States. Or you've you got a bunch of offers on the table. I think I remember hearing uh, some clubs in Spain. Some of the top clubs in Spain were after you. Pretty much every club in the world were after you, and then you make a decision. Uh, and and what was that final decision there? And wh- why did you choose to come back to the states, come back to to to, to Florida, and 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 what happened there? I think, oh, it was a tough decision. Like I, I didn't know, really like know what to do, and then I randomly just got a call at night. It was like eleven o'clock at night. I was in my bed, and actually my phone was on silent, so. My phone was like turned the wrong way up, so it lit up the room. And I was like, oh, like, I should have left my phone the other way. And I looked and I had an unknown number, and I was thinking, oh, I'm not going to answer it. And then I thought, nah, I better answer it. And it was like the call from Orlando saying, look, are you interested? Like, we can get you over here. And like, it just, I just knew then, like, I was like, yeah, like, this is what I want to do because, as I said, like, when I was a young kid, like, I always wanted to play professional soccer in the USA. And also Marta was there. So for me, I was like, she's like a hero of mine. So I was like, are you kidding? Like the chance to play with Marta. Obviously, they've got like Alex Morgan um, a few like gold medal winners, like World Cup winners. So yeah, yeah I was absolutely buzzing and thought, yeah, 
I definitely what's want that, to explain What's that environment that. like? What's that experience like playing playing with some of those players you just mentioned that are the top players in the world, players that have done on the world stage in, in Olympics, in, in, in World Cups? How is that training with them every morning, waking up and, and knowing that you've got that level and that, uh, that expectation in every oh. game, every training? No pressure, by the way. How, <laughs> how, how, how do you handle that? How do you, uh, what, what is that experience like? I think... Obviously, you're nervous when you first go, but, like, just like it was at Man City, like, the girls are so nice and, like, so genuine. Like, I, I guess, like, you just put them on a pedestal and you think of them as just amazing footballers and they're really successful, but, like, they're really nice people as well. Um, and, obviously, once you get on the pitch, you obviously just have to be confident and, like, when you string up your first few passes together, you get a bit of confidence and then start doing back heels with Marta and then you're like, oh, my God, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> so nah it's obviously it's amazing eh? I love playing with them it's good to see the Americans like their mindset is so mm -hmm. different like obviously I played with the top players in England and um, who are incredible and um, but then with the US national team players like their mindset is just they just don't lose like mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what you put in their way like they're gonna they're gonna beat it and they're gonna be successful no matter what which is crazy because Obviously, there's just no stopping them, eh? Yeah. Like, so that mentality me, is that a, is that a mentality yeah. that that is starts on the on the training ground? Where where does that where does that mentality come from? Is that is that something that they just live with? They wake up in the morning, they have their breakfast, they're off the training, they're focused. Yeah. I mean, you must be focused continuing. That must be a, a different sort of level of of, of demand. Um, that's probably it's probably yeah, like a lot of commitment as well, like. Your, our team you know like we have meetings and obviously at the start of the season you like make goals and what you want to achieve but I think those players because they've been so successful they know what it takes and it it's all about the little things it's, it's doing the little things every day that make the difference so you'll go in in the morning everyone's going to eat well everyone's going to make sure they've got all their kit ready like it's all the tiny little things yeah. that I think make the difference so it's good to like obviously do that every day and like once you've got other good people around you like you can make sure you're better so yeah it's a good environment good so obviously the world cup we've got to, we've got to touch on that um so you go to the world cup i mean i think the pinnacle of it, of, of the game of the you ever speak to any top players they'll always say playing in a world cup is, is their experience is the, is the best experience that they can ever have competing for your country representing your country um, but not only playing in the World Cup, you scored in the World Cup. What was yeah. talk, talk us through that? Is that something that was even imaginable when you when you well, were growing up playing in your hips days in Scotland to, to to even playing in Orlando and and, and going through the ranks of Man City and, and whatnot? Oh, I can't still honestly find it hard to like believe because obviously growing up, Scotland are ter like have been terrible at football and never qualify for any Euros, any World Cups, and the women's team had never qualified before. Right. Um, but you know since our new coach took over uh, about two years ago three years ago now she kind of like just like livened everything up like she brought in a lot of young players um, who had obviously been playing at more professional clubs yeah. um, so our team was actually doing really good in the quali qualification phase um, but when it came down to the last day to qualify we had to win and we needed another result to go our way. Yeah. So even when we woke up on that day, we thought, ah, oh, the other game was Switzerland and Poland. Yeah. And Switzerland, like, were really expected to beat Poland. And we kicked off at the same time. And I was actually on the bench for, for that game. So I was, like, getting updates from, from the Switzerland game while our game was getting played. And we were winning. And then we were drawing. But I knew that their game, they were drawn as well. And I went on as a sub knowing that we need to score a goal and, yeah. we're, and we could go through. Yeah. So when I went on, we got a corner and we scored from it pretty soon. So when we all got in the huddle, I thought, girls, like, Switzerland are drawing. There's, like, yeah. about three minutes left. Like, we just need to hold on and, like, we'll qualify. And then everyone was like, no way. Like, we can't believe it. So when the final whistle went and we knew we qualified and we knew we were going, like, that was probably, like, the best feeling we ever had. Uh, just because we'd never done it before. Yeah. I know, like, maybe other countries, like, especially USA, they're just expected to go every year. So, for Scotland to qualify, it was obviously a huge thing. 
Um, I think it got a lot of um, men's people that had never watched women's football. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people started to to take notice of Scotland women because their men's team had never been to a World Cup for years. So, oh, we'll watch the girls now. So, yeah, yeah. it was a huge, a huge thing for us. And Massive. yeah, that, that actual World Cup was amazing. Uh, it's hard to explain. I think knowing that we had a lot of uh, thousands of Scotland fans make the journey to France. Mm. So I think to see the impact you've had on other people to actually buy flights, like get dressed up in their kilts to come yeah. and watch, you know, like, wow, like, you've got a lot of support behind us. So, yeah, yeah it was an incredible feeling. Uh, and to score against England, I, I think, like, we were 2-0 down, so it made it 2-1. So I was mostly just focused on getting the ball and starting again. It wasn't really till after the game I thought, oh, wow, like, I scored the first goal. So, yeah, I'm obviously really proud of it. And, yeah, chuff. That's great. That's amazing. So, obviously, right now, going through this pandemic, this, this – COVID-19 coronavirus, how has this changed uh, what you're doing as a player now? Um, what are you doing with Orlando? Obviously, you're in Manchester. You can't get over to Orlando yet. Um, so what, what, what are you doing in between? What are you doing in, in this time now between being able to get back on the field and get back to, to, to normal life? So after I had the discussion with the Orlando coach, because obviously they knew I wasn't going to be back for a while and they thought they knew the league wasn't going to start for maybe a couple months so I was supposed to be in Orlando to start pre-season and uh, when it did in, like the end of March and um, but obviously that didn't happen so luckily they said right I've just played a full season in Australia mm-hmm. like take two, two weeks off so I took the first two weeks completely off relaxed recovered and then I'm doing like a mini pre-season from home now so that when the league does start, I'm back fit again. So, yeah, it's a bit hard to train on your own. And, uh, so what, are you, what, are you, what, what resources are you pulling for, for your individual training? What, what's, what kind of motivation do you have to keep yourself accountable for? And, and, and how, do you, how do you go into that waking up every morning knowing that you've got to train, but it's not a normal training environment? What's... Well, I think we're, the coaches give us a lot of like, good stuff. Like we've got an app that we use that the strength and conditioning coach puts in like our runs for the day or weight training for the day so it's easy to tick off so you know that having that and you yeah. tick it off and you know you're done for the day that's helpful and uh, so I like to wake up and just get it done as soon as possible yeah. so I think for me I never want to like be last than anything so I want to make sure when I go back to Orlando and we're doing the running test, like I'm at the front, like I don't want to be at the back. Like that gives me the fear, like being last in a fitness test. So yeah. that's really my motivation, like uh, to get up and do it. And also like, while I'm running, I imagine like I'm a winger. So I think, right, if I've got a sprint, like it's the last minute of a game and someone's played a through ball and I have to get on the end of it. So I kind of like make game situations in my head. So instead of just running on, on a grass pitch, I'm like actually running to score the winner of a game or something like sure. just kind of use techniques like that to, to yeah. stay motivated. Yeah. So what would you or advice be to young players right now who, who obviously, you know, for example, our players at Laguna United, they're not on the field. We're, we, we can't be on the field yet. So you know, we also have a training app, Top Tech, is that, that, that our players are using, our young players are using. Um, but what, what advice would you give them um, in this time off or this time that we're away from the field in terms of that commitment, in terms of um, training and, and making sure they're sharp, ready for their return? I think that it's a, actually, if you change your mindset and think, uh, like, take this time to, like, work on something you couldn't before, like to make yourself better at something like for me I'm working on like my sprint technique which takes a lot of time and you need a lot of rest time but during the season we've not got time to do that because you've got games 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 Mm -hmm. so there's certain things you can work on that you couldn't if you were in seasons so even like things like your weaker foot like hammer your weaker foot to make sure you're more accurate um, your first touch it can even be things like hitting a ball off a wall and making sure you trap it right or take a directional first touch like there's so much stuff you can do um so yeah and I think just repetitions make make you better and it's like the perfect time to practice like give yourself a task like all right I need to kick the ball in there right. take a good first touch with my left foot and then pass it in between like two cones 
So you say, right, I'll do that 10 times. Yeah. Say you do it first time and you only manage to do it twice successfully. All right, you do it again until you manage to get five right and then six right and just repetitions. I think that's definitely makes a huge difference when it comes to game day. So when you do go back to your club mm. and you are at training, you're sharp and, and you've improved and you're a better player. So that's the individual side. What are you doing as a team? What, what, what are, is all in meeting? Are you doing Zoom sessions? What, 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 what can you do? There must be limitations to what it is you can really cover. But how are you? Uh, how is your? How is Orlando Pride covering that 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 team element? Yeah, we've got. Um, it's good. We've got uh, Zoom sessions. So we've got like some tactical stuff with the coaches, like either the attacking stuff or defensive yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. And then we've also got Fridays. We do like a team workout. And it's normally just like a fun workout, like quite, for quite a laugh. So we do like Zumba or like karate or something like that, like just to have a laugh at each other, but like yeah. also like get to know your teammates and stuff. <laughs> and then we do a couple of like team bonding Zooms where it's like we had one for like meeting the new girls and stuff like that, which was a good laugh. Yeah. So yeah, definitely like Zoom and FaceTime and stuff is, is helping with that team That's stuff. Cool. That's fantastic. So we talked about a lot about football, but what's 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 going to be life after football for, for you what what's what do you have on the horizon you, you look in the coaching game is it where are you at with with, with that i don't know i don't want to think about that yet <laughs> <laughs> uh, i don't know like i obviously love football but i think for me like i could could go into coaching but i'd like to do more of like if i was going to coach i'd be more of a technical coach i think um I don't know if I'd like to manage a team or anything like that, but I can also see myself after football doing something completely different. Yeah. Like I was like, I love science and biology and stuff. So I was actually, I love my dog. So I was even thinking I could be a vet after this. <laughs> like, and I actually Googled yeah. like what, what qualifications do you need to be a vet? So yeah. I don't know. could be anything, but I'm just going to definitely put everything into football while I can and then deal with that later. That's fantastic. Well, if you do want to go on the coaching side, we've got some we've got some spots over here for you. If you want to come and join us at Laguna, okay. yeah, I'll hold you to that one. Uh, <laughs> Claire, I, I really appreciate you taking the time. Um, it's awesome for I think just the younger generation, younger players, even families, parents, just to hear from someone that has been through it all from the youth level, you know, going and playing in in some with some of the top top teams, top top clubs in the world, rubbing shoulders with some of the those top players and then obviously developing into a top player yourself. Um, I know you're highly ambitious and, and, and there's a lot to come. So I'm sure our families and players will stay tuned and, and follow you as you, as you develop. Um, you know, obviously your Scotland career continues. So I think you've got what, 28 caps so far, seven goals, 28 caps, um, which is, which is a huge, huge achievement. I know there's more to come there. So uh, seriously appreciate you being with us today. Um, thank you. And uh, hopefully we'll stay in touch with you in the future. Yeah, I just, just wanted to say, like, obviously, with I know, like, the structure of your club and all um, the teams you've got. So, for anyone, like, that's watching, like, going through, like, starting at a club and, like, working yourself, like, up through the ranks, like, listening to your coaches, training hard, uh, it can definitely get you anywhere. I started off at a club that had, like, no resor resources. Like, I know the amazing facilities you have got. So, yeah, if the kids stick in, like, I'm sure they'll make it too. It's amazing. It's amazing. Thanks a lot, Claire.